Welcome back to the Cave of Science, and today we're going to do a little discussion on covalent bonds. Uh, covalent bonding occurs when pairs of electrons are shared by atoms, and these are typically done with uh, nonmetals. And the reason that they share is so they can get a full outer level or fulfill the octet rule. And neither atom is strong enough to pull the electron away like in an ionic bond. So they do the next best thing, and that is to share. Uh, typically, when they share, the one with the higher elect electrical negativity will pull it in closer to itself. And we'll do another uh, video a little later on uh, talking about the electrical negativity and which particular type of atom is going to pull it in closer. And covalent compounds, they can be a solid, liquid, or gas. And they typically do not conduct electricity or heat well. A little bit of review. Remember the octet rule. Atoms want to have uh, eight electrons in their outermost shell, and there's a phosphorus, and it has five electrons in its outer shell, so it wants to pick up three. Argon, on the other hand, an inert gas, already has eight, so therefore it is a very, very stable atom. A single bond is when two electrons or one pair of electrons are shared between two atoms. And this is usually shown by a single line between the two atoms. A good example of this is hydrogen chloride. So hydrogen would like to gain one more electron. Chlorine, on the other hand, would like to gain one more electron. So neither one has a the ability to do, rip it apart from the other. So what's going to happen is that they're going to share one pair of electrons. And so you can see on the hydrogen now has its two in the outermost energy level. Chlorine is sharing one pair, so now it has eight, fulfills the octet rule. And that single shared pair is shown by a single line. And that would be a single bond. Uh, double bonds, on the other hand, as you can probably guess, is when two atoms share two pairs of electrons, or four electrons. Uh, this type of bond is, is stronger, but less stable. So let's take a look at this one. So we look at carbon dioxide. This is a pretty classic example. Carbon has four electrons, so it's going to want to gain four. Oxygen, on the other hand, has six, so it's going to want to gain two. So what's going to happen is, if you look, the carbon will have a double bond on each side of the uh, of the nucleus, if you will. And so now you can count up eight electrons for the carbon. And when you look at the oxygen, it now also has eight. Again, you can double count these electrons because they're shared between the two different types of uh, atoms here. So carbon dioxide, CO2, is a very classic example of a double bond between two nonmetals. Well, you can probably guess that the next one's going to be a triple bond, so three pairs of electrons are shared. It is the least stable of the uh, three general types of covalent bond. A good example of this is acetylene, C2H2. So hydrogen wants to gain one Carbon wants to gain four. So when you put these two together, you can see that there's a triple bond between the two carbons, and then a single bond between each carbon and a hydrogen. And again, you do the electrons, especially when you draw these models, they're going to rearrange themselves, or you can arrange the electrons to fulfill the octet rule for each particular atom. So each Carbon now has eight, and each hydrogen has two. And so it fulfills the octet rule. A polar covalent bond is when one atom has higher electrical negativity. And we're going to take a little longer look at this in a, a video, which will be coming up rather quickly. And as a result, the shared electrons will be closer to the atom with a higher electrical negativity. And so therefore, is referred to as a polar covalent bond. Good example of this is water. 
and you can see water is H2O. Oxygen has six, so it's going to need two more to fulfill the octet rule. And hydrogen wants to gain one more to have a full outer energy level. And so therefore you have two single bonds that are attached between the oxygen and each of the hydrogens. Now this is the top part here is drawn linear, but if you look at the, the Vesper model, you're going to see that it is it's referred to as a, a bent diagram. And we'll take a look at the Vesper models in a later video also. A uh, nonpolar is created when atoms share their electrons equally. Uh, this usually occurs with the diatomic elements. If you go back to the whole idea of the diatomic elements, they occur or are found in nature as two atoms of the same one. And so if they're the same atom, neither one's going to have a higher affinity for the electron. So it's going to be considered nonpolar. And a good example of this is hydrogen gas. Could have done with this with chlorine gas, uh, nitrogen gas, and so forth. So hydrogen gas, H2, is going to want to share those two electrons between each hydrogen. And so they're shared equally. And each hydrogen will have two electrons in its alveolus energy level. So this is just a, a brief look on uh, covalent bonding. And again, covalent bonds are when pairs of electrons are shared between two nonmetals. All right, until next time.